Okay, so um, Ofer, it's so nice to get to meet you. I loved your film, Leaving Paradise, and um, it was so interesting um, on a lot of levels to watch it. And I'm curious to know what made you interested in this topic in the first place in Brazil, in the countryside. Um, um, I'm curious to know sort of how you came to the project. Yes, of course. This is always one of the first questions because it's so a unique uh, story and family. And uh, uh, of course, I couldn't uh, think by, by myself about this story. So it's like uh, we can say, I can say it's like came to me. Uh, it was a little bit more than seven years ago in the summer of 2014. 2014 mm -hmm. uh, my wife and uh, myself, we invited uh, our friend to watch with us uh, a game, uh, Brazil against uh, Mexico. It wow. was part of the World Cup uh, champion. And yes. just before this uh, friend came, she asked if she can uh, come with another friend of her. So we say, of course. And the friend was funny. Funny, the uh, uh, the one that uh, married uh, Israel, uh, Galego, yeah. the, the couple that um, left the, the villa. So yeah, she told me she, by herself, she did Aliyah eight years before. And mm -hmm. she had a good life he, uh, here, I, I, I heard from her. But she says she's going to leave to Brazil to marry has her uh, Brazilian uh, fiance, and uh, and then she told me about uh, this tribe, thirty people, fifteen uh, brother and children from the same uh, parents, from the same mother, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that they decided all of them to do uh, aliyah, and I saw a picture that she took there and um, a movies and you know all the children, the cute children playing uh, in the mad and, yeah. uh, and, and uh, it looks like amazing place, amazing people. And actually after less than two months, something like six or seven weeks uh, later, I found myself in Brazil with uh, my equipment almost alone uh, and started to, to document uh, this uh, film. Um, my first question when I uh, heard about this story is uh, why they are willing to leave this paradise, uh, what look from the picture as paradise, mm -hmm. and, and come to here because actually not only to, to here, every, every uh, Western country that they will come to will cause to the, I think, I saw to the um, destroying the of the um, community. This was right. the first. The reason question. that they moved to that commune in the first place, I think, was in order to have sort of this insulated life away from all of those modern, you know, trappings, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. And and uh, they did it only f about five years before I met them. They mm. came from the city, so it was a pretty new thing for for, for them. Also, it mm. was. And um, and actually, when I landed there, um, I understood uh, that the story will be more complicated because after I met Cleo, I, the father, for the first time, I I immediately I felt the you know the the power of uh, his character character yeah. and um, and how. Um, He's very, really, he's, 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 he's an amazing man, I think. But uh, of course, you I felt also how tough he can, he can be on the other side. And and the thing that I didn't know, because Fanny didn't tell me in Israel when, he, when we met in Israel, is that uh, this uh, farm, this villa, was his dream. This is, was a very important detail she didn't tell me. Yeah. And then I understood that, OK, it's not just they decided to come to Israel, OK? But he's going to to give up for his the the, the dream that he just uh, recently um, uh, fu fulfilled. Yep. So yeah, no, and I think that that tension comes out. I think in a really deep and real way that 
you realize that it's really his dream over his children's dreams and their lives versus his life. And I think that, you know, he had defined his dream in terms of family and his dream became that of the entire family fulfilling his dream, but it didn't take into account his own children's, you know, ambitions and connections to other parts of their identities. And what's interesting is that it's not that they were leaving who they were behind by moving to Israel. They were actually going even further into their past and and understanding their deeper identity to be one that was rooted to Israel, not as a way for forgetting their roots or fleeing, um, um, you know, some traditional family value, but rather actually to connect with that. Um, and then I thought the interesting thing is that the tension with the father came out because um, he was not as connected to anything else that was not what he had defined, right, for his children. He didn't share that same feeling of, I think, connection to the Sephardic past and that legacy and what does that mean now for if there is, you know, a state of Israel for like a modern Brazilian Jewish identity, right? Like that didn't come into his figuration at all, but it was very prevalent for his children and several of them actually, I see, you know, had gone to Israel before and knew Hebrew. Um, and sort of had that internal struggle to some extent, probably by the time you met them. Would yeah. you say that that's true? Um, repeat about the last uh, sentence, sorry. Yeah, that I think it seems like, you know, by the time that Fanny goes back and brings you with her, <laughs> um, it seems like by the time you met the family, the, the uh, you sort of chronicled the next generation's crisis of identity that included what is their connection to Israel? What is their connection to the larger Jewish people as defined today? What does that mean for, you know, a past that was truncated, like cut off the Sephardic, right, identity? Um, they are reclaiming that and trying to see like, what does that mean for us today, right? And oh. so I think that like Fanny, um, um, you know, her husband is one one of, but not the only one of the children who like Bibi also had a connection to Israel. Um, and there was another girl, right? And then you, you document their trips to Israel as well. And you see that they feel at home there and they're looking for like a yeah. place that feels like home. Yeah. Um, yeah. But their father already decided what is home is what he defines as home without really a connection to anything beyond himself in that commune, right? Um, yeah, the, the dream to come to Israel to make the Aliyah came from the children. Actually, Bibi, uh, Deborah, mm -hmm. uh, was the first one who thought about that when she was the, um, after the second time she was in Israel. Uh, actually, in the second time, the villa was exists um, and just started i mean and when she came back um she came with the idea and i can say that the their movement to the villa uh, make them feel think more about their roots about their identity yeah because mm -hmm. where they were when they were in the city uh, they were um, some of them were out of the city um, for example, Tutu, Yossi, one of the characters who also speak a little bit Hebrew. In that time, he was uh, work as a, in a factory more than one hour from the city where they, they live. And um, so when they become together, all the 15, so they, it's also one of the reasons they, they, they talk more about their, their future, about their identity. And then the um, idea of the Aliyah came to this uh, situation mm -hmm. um, the father uh, he is the one who brought the judaism to the to his children it's mm -hmm. a, a little bit a, tra a tragedy story mm -hmm. tragic story because because he brought the judaism and then the, they got, got to know israel they went to israel and they came with the this uh, new dream to come to israel and this was, of course, um, against his dream that he just uh, uh, make it uh, come true. But uh, for the father, um, he, he the time that I met them, he said that he is 
he will do it he can he, uh, but for each for his children mm. because for from he was honest with me and with them because for for, for himself he wasn't the um, perfect he find that he's a uh, his place and uh and uh he was that time almost uh, 55 years old i think something like mm. that mm -hmm. you know uh, he he didn't have the, that dream to come to Israel, but he liked the idea because he liked the the, the Torah, the Bible. The, the um, actually he was by himself in Israel in the 90s, but oh. in, um, not not alone in like um, uh, or, um, like an organized trip. Organized trip, yeah, mm. something like that. Um, um, but uh, so. So I think he, 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 in that time he he, um, he he didn't think it will it will happen so so quickly. When Fanny came to the family, it just make all the process go more more fast. Mm. He br she brought the, the the rabbi suddenly, and uh, they started after a few months. The uh, since the wedding, after four months, they started the the conversion process, the gyu. Mm -hmm. So it was suddenly too fast to to everybody. I think. Mm -hmm. Um so I don't know if he decided that from the beginning. He I see. He, I see. He, he go went with the dream of his chi with the children but uh after that yeah I think we you saw what uh, happened. Yes. That's interesting and I think that the you know the conversion part also brings this other very modern, you know, question of who is a Jew. And I think mm. that it was such an interesting layered question because of course with this their Sephardic past that that, that they could trace their ancestors back you know, to the Iberian Peninsula and that they came to the New World and that the practice of Judaism was lost. Um, and um, for modern Jews now, you know, I think that coming to terms with the Sephardic legacy is twofold. One is the Sephardic diaspora, those that moved somewhere else and retained their Jewish practice. And the others is those that had to convert or become secret Jews. And over time, that identity then becomes altered. Um, and it's not a public one and it's not a shared one um, in the same way. And so what what does that mean today? And who the question of who is a Jew um, and authenticity and what is your relationship then to the state of Israel? I just think that it's a very real question. And the fact that he actually does convert with an Argentine um, Beitin, who I think is, 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 are they conservative or orthodox? No, it was a conservative. Of a course. conservative, right. That's <laughs> why. So it's, so if, of course, and this is not, you know, unique just to Argentina, but it was a conservative conversion. And so it's not recognized in Israel. And so and, um, is, it, 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 it's, not, it, it's not recognized inside Israel, but if you do it outside Israel, for example, in the United States, so it can be accepted in, in Israel, but in Israel, uh, like wedding, by the way, if yeah. you want to get married, I can get go, go to Boston uh, municipality or something to get married. Or and Cyprus. Um, <laughs> I married also, already, but <laughs> yeah. um, and, and, and go back to Israel, to the Ministry of uh, Inter Interior mm -hmm. and, uh, and get the, the, um, this uh, okay. wedding uh, recognized. Uh, but if I, but it, in Israel it's uh, impossible. You know, just a few minutes before we started the conversation, I just uh, opened the the one of the biggest uh, Israeli uh, news website, and I saw some um, some items, some article about uh, wedding wedding in the Rabbanut mm -hmm. in Israel. Uh, um, I, I don't remember, but what I wanted to say that it's 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 in Israel it's uh, all the time. This, this those question of yeah. uh, who is the Jews and uh, who who is uh, responsible for the for for the kashrut yeah. or for the wedding or for the conversion it's it's it, we are we are still dealing with them. For me, I must to say that the kind of the Judaism that I met there in the villa, I I never. Uh, met such a wonderful and uh, innocent innocent i think this mm. is the world judaism so beautiful and i traveled around the world i, I met uh, jews not only from israel but this was really special really i 
I felt more Jewish there in the villa than here in Israel. That's, really. That's really. amazing. So, and I, I felt really connected with, uh, still, by the way, with this kind of uh, faith that uh, is um, not, uh, that, that, that somebody believes with all his heart and he doesn't need the, uh, you know, the society or the, the rabbi or the priest or whatever to, to, for, for that. And this is the father, this is Cleo. Uh, I'm not, um, I'm not comparing myself to him. Yeah, we are different, but I, 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 I felt, uh, I, I love this, his kind of uh, um, simple, simple um, faith, you know, and there is something in the villa that uh, all the time make me to think about the world Bereshit, Genesis. Mm. Yeah. Because uh, everything there is uh, so, you know, so simple. So um, mm. the, the kitchen is uh, made from stone, you know, like like, yeah. like uh, the kitchen that maybe the people of Israel uh, <laughs> cook at uh, that time. Uh, yeah. uh, so so it's it's there you know the the the, the in also the ceramic they 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 work with they 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 live in this how they, they they make their living so um it's also very simple you know very uh, also also her, her, sorry um sorry if i uh, cut this uh, yeah. <laughs> Joy cut this moment. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying that ev everything is uh, connecting to the 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 face of the the face, the, the ceramic, the way they live, the Judaism. It's uh, I felt is is it's um every every all of these uh, parts have connection. Yeah, and I think that you know from watching. From the beginning, I think that the, at least I, I felt a lot of compassion and empathy for Cleo wanting to live with integrity and knowing himself and knowing what matters and wanting to not sort of be a victim of his circumstance and to live a life that was authentic to him. And when I saw the Jewish faith you know the Shabbat and just the way that they sang and lit candles and um, you know they had their own it's not the community didn't matter they had their own community but it wasn't institutionally supported you know exactly. um, and so I think that that there was something really interesting in that um, and you know as a historian when I watch this I think it's interesting because it seems like such a kind of esoteric, like they created it just for themselves and they came up with this to escape the modern world. But as you get into the story, you realize that these, they actually have internet and they have computers and they are tracing on genealogical sites their past to their Sephardic past and their converso reality and also are traveling to Israel and you're documenting that. They're not living outside of space and time, actually, you know? Um, yeah. Actually, and, about the internet, I must say yeah. that, when, that uh, I, I visit there for, for the for the making this movie uh, five times during mm -hmm. five years. Mm -hmm. um, so in the first time and second time and the third time, there was no internet. Mm -hmm. the, the, there were computers, uh, but no internet. The internet came only, I don't know, 2017 or 18, something like mm. that. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to tell you that. So they, that they, is interesting. They, yeah, so they, they they came from the city. You have to yeah. remember. Yeah, they came from the city. They know what is a city. Yeah. A uh, uh, few of them, yeah, visiting Israel. And uh, the others also started to study in university, uh, also outside the, the area where they live. But uh, so so they knew uh, more or less what is going on out there. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, um, the older one, the young, yeah. less, of course, because they came when they were children. Yeah. Yeah. And an interesting part for me is I don't know if you've ever heard of Alberto Gertrunov. He is an Argentine writer 
who wrote a book called Los Gauchos Judíos, The Jewish Gauchos. And he's considered by a lot of people like the grandfather of modern Latin American Jewish literature. Um, and he, he's this immigrant from Ukraine who moves, I think when he was eight years old, to, um, um, to a agricultural colony in Argentina. And they had these colonies um, that were funded by a Western um, European Jew, Baron de um, um, Hirsch, um, who founded these colonies in Brazil and also in Argentina that were oh that were far, that were not like in Buenos Aires, that were not in Sao Paulo, they were in the countryside. And this was going to solve a lot of problems. One is this is the time where you have all these nationalist movements in Europe. You have the emergence of really like modern nation states um, at the turn of the 20th century. So the end of the 1900s, beginning of the um, end of the 1800s, beginning of the 1900s, you start to have these ideas of Zionism, of the Jew living off his labor, or, um, of, um, you know, by the sweat of their own brow, of not being leeches on society, all these things that were said about Jews. You have, you know, these um, first um, sort of 1900 century um, um, Eastern Europeans that start coming to the land of Israel. Um, of course, it was Palestine. Um, and um, and just, just like there's kibbutz that are formed, kibbutzim that are formed in Israel, there's also these communes, but they're really communities. Um, and they're, you know, and they have Jewish names like Moisesville. Um, um, another one is Entre Rios, Between Rivers. You have some in Brazil. Also, you have a very famous book called The Centaur in the Garden, which is translated into English if anyone wants to read it. It's by Moisir Sclair, um, and it's just beautiful. Um, and it also has to do with like city versus countryside and deals with actually this era in the late 1800s and early 1900s that Jews immigrated to South America and lived in these agricultural colonies and maintained their Judaism and built their own institutions and schools to do that and within a few generations most of them moved to the city this was also a way that Argentina and Brazil granted Jews entry on the condition that they would do this and so it was a win-win for everyone they were trying to populate the interior um, Jews were trying to find a haven Gerichinov writes about this as like a land of milk and honey a paradise he describes the women in the countryside oh. in like biblical terms and also writes as if this is a continuation of like the Sephardic past because Spanish is authentic to oh. the Jews. So I think it's really interesting coming from that perspective to see this modern family in Brazil creating for themselves this agricultural colony with the idea really to take themselves out in a lot of ways from the modern world, but also a Jewish institutional life that existed in Brazil. I don't know how much that would have been an option or if they would have been assimilated Jews in Brazil. Um, but clearly Israel becomes attractive to them. And I think that that interplay on all of these layers of like agricultural settlement and past identity and like what are their modern choices, I think that it's interlaced in a really powerful way in the film that makes it real and that makes it about family dynamics also and love and your right to choose who you marry and where you live you know um yeah it's, it's very interesting i later write me down the the name of the these uh, books and the uh, authors I will. Uh, because uh, yeah i understand the connection uh, you you mentioned the 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 word uh, kibbutz yeah so, well, first of all i'm originally from Jerusalem, but I live now in kibbutz. But this is not a kibbutz like it used to be in the past, like 70 years ago or mm -hmm. even 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, everything got uh, private, yeah? There is no dining room here, for example. But, uh, but there is a lot of similarity between the word kibbutz to the way they live there. And uh, if you remember, in the, um, there is a scene from the, their uh, archive yeah. Um, that the, from the day they left the the city, and the yeah. father is the one who uh, holding the camera, 
and yeah. they say in uh, Portuguese, uh, this is the first moment that we are living to the kibbutz. Yes, I do remember that. Yeah. I wrote it down actually. It's actually my uh, first line, a kibbutz in Brazil, seven hours from Sao Paulo. <laughs> yeah. So they, 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 they build a kibbutz and they, 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 they actually the, the, this idea, idea came to Leo when he was 19, uh, as he said, or, be, or, or tw no, 20 something. And uh, he didn't know the kibbutz yet, but then when they realized the kibbutz, and by the way, uh, Tutu, Yossi and Bibi, Deborah, uh, Deborah, the, the two of them that were in Israel, they, they uh, were volunteer in a kibbutz uh, just in the area where I live. It's uh, 45 minutes from it, uh, kibbutz Bar'am. Mm. So they knew, they, 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 and this is still, by the way, till today, this is a, a real kibbutz, yeah, a real kibbutz. Like everybody earned the same, yeah, even if I am the manager of the factory of the kibbutz, I earned like the one who do the laundry and the, they have dining room and the, it's still a community. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the name kibbutz actually before they 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 gave the name Villa Barolo for mm -hmm. the villa, mm -hmm. which is, by the way Villa Barolo it's a um, it's a, um, a, a word game uh, Bajo in uh, Portuguese it's a med mm -hmm. and uh, Barolo it's like the 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 rolling ro rolling med something a, a, a world game with the it's like the world in med uh, the kind of the med that they have there this area by the way so huh. the name is nothing right now the, the, the villa Barolo, there is nothing with the kibbutz but the first when they when they uh, call this uh, idea before they move it was uh, or from the first days it was a kibbutz Hmm. That's yeah, really, so. that's really interesting. And it does. And I remember that in the film, it's like one of the opening scenes. Um, and people, by the way, that I know that live like in my kibbutz where I live, that they, they know what it was, the old kibbutz. It's make them the uh, watching the, this movie, make them to think a lot about their uh, past life, about the time that uh, it was uh, uh, kibbutz, uh, like, uh, in the before even uh, Israel was established, yeah, like you yeah. say, from the um, early of the um, uh, 20th century, right? Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and to remember sort of, and and what was the history of it, and then what is the nostalgia for it, right? Um, there's not all, it's not always the same, but but they both live on, right? What actually was and what we remember and miss. Um, also can be a reflection of, you know, yeah. all, all systems are imperfect in different ways, right? So <laughs> you miss the perfection of the other. Um, I thought I wanted to ask you, you know, one of the um, scenes that I thought you did, um, I think that it's very philosophical, the movie and how you shoot it. And I loved, you know, when you juxtaposed Cleo in the river, in the natural river, and, you know, um, Israel in, in his mikveh, you know, uh, um, and I just, I, I'd love for you to just talk a little bit about that juxtaposition um, and what it, what it meant to you to film it that way. Um, do, you, do you know what I'm talking about? The, the yeah, film? Of course, of course, yeah, of yeah, yeah. First of all, I must say that, uh, when I when I heard that uh, Fanny and uh, Israel uh, Galego they left the villa, I felt like whoa, all my story, <laughs> my story, their story, but all the uh, the story of the movie is changing. What I'm gonna do now? Yeah. Um, and uh, after two weeks, I talked with Fanny and Galego, and I really didn't know if they will agree to. Uh, continue participating participating in the movie there them and the family I didn't I, I wasn't sure although I, I really made a good uh, relationship with them but it was a crisis that happened mm -hmm. and for me it's it's really amazing that the both sides even they was uh, they were uh, with um, no uh, connection between them they let me continue and I was in Argentina 
and mm -hmm. after that came in the first time after that came to the villa and mm -hmm. also in the, my second uh, journey i also uh, actually three, uh, three of the five times i visit in brazil i visit also in argentina funny mm -hmm. and uh, sure. Israel. so so for me it was a uh, really amazing that they, they they agreed that they 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 gave me this trust mm -hmm. because they knew I seen that I doing a movie and not like a you know yellow uh, movie you know about the, the I really uh, looked for the for the deepest part for the yeah uh, more uh, philosophical uh, issues and uh, I think that um, in the end of the process uh, when you watch the movie of course you think about judaism and about israel and aliyah and uh, and who is a jews and who is not like we say before and uh, mm. about education about but uh, in the end it's uh, and and now i can say i'm happy that this is the the the, the movie mm. uh, because it's more universal it's talking yeah. about uh, everybody can find himself in in this movie um, yeah. even if he's not a Jew, Jewish or Israeli. And yeah. um, I yeah. actually, I don't know if, if I, if I gave you answer for your question because, uh, no, but it, no, yeah. this is, all, this is, no, it's all interesting. I think it just reminded you of your, of the process. And I think that, um, uh -huh. you, you asked me about this scene, sorry, this scene. Uh, yeah. in the river in the, in the yeah in the the, 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 in the because the mikvah i think it was it was so indicative like of yitzhak wanted to uh, i mean israel wanted to galego wanted to um you know yeah. enter like a modern jewish identity that is you know embraced um you have institutions that that support it, right? That you have the Beit Din and the conversion and the mikvah ot, and you have a in in Argentina, also in Brazil, you have a you have a community institutional establishments like you have other places too, and then you have you know Cleo and his river, just you know Garden of Eden, you know back to yeah. the essence, yeah. um, and I think that it was exactly what each of them wanted. Um, yeah, actually, when I took this uh, scene with Cleo, um, he was naked, and but he didn't care. He told me, he told me you can shoot whatever you want. It was he, he's doing that uh, every morning till mm -hmm. today, going out from uh, his uh, small uh, <laughs> uh, home, the place mm -hmm. where they 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 sleeping, and you go just each, just a mm -hmm. few steps for the stream. So when I shoot this uh, this scene, I, I knew. Sometimes you don't know. It's you 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 find it in the editing, but in that yeah. specific uh, scene, I knew. I, I I think I thought immediately about the, this cut between the mikveh mm. to to here. I mm. think yeah. I think I, I made this. Uh, I, I I I took um, I record Cleo before the mikveh. I think this was the order. But I, I anyway, I, I knew that uh, in the movie I felt this uh, uh, that this cut, this co connection between the two, it's it's will will bring uh, uh, will be first of all uh, cinematic and second of all will say something more with meaning about yeah. the, the situation. Well, I would say you succeeded. I I, I it, it it will stay with me that. I think that scene and the juxtaposition. Um, I wanted to ask you on a different topic. Um, this question of whose voices are told, like whose voices we hear, whose voices matter in defining, you know, choices. And I noticed that there's actually there was a moment that Cleo's wife, remind me her name, Anita. Anita is. Um, you know, we don't see her speak very much. We see that the labor of her hands literally is what maintains like the that's what gives the structure actually to the family life, to the rhythm of their days. It's the work that everyone does. But when they come together around the food and around the home, Anita is really central in what she does. Um, but when they're sort of having these existential conversations, she doesn't participate very much. And at one point, 
um, I think that sort of a heightened moment of frustration that Cleo, I think, has to decide between, you know, in imposing his vision and his dream and making space for theirs when it seems like they come to a head. He says to Anita, Where, what do you think? Why don't you any, say anything? Your voice really matters. And he says those words like your voice. And it, I wrote that down. It struck me um, as I was thinking about you know, having the opportunity to have the conversation with you, that it was interesting to me that her voice was actually pretty silent, except for when you had intimate moments to really just um, be with her in which she, I think, allowed herself to express her feelings um, more and the terms under which she was engaging with the process, which was mostly, I think, about not losing her son. Um, um, rather than weighing in exactly on the Israel versus the colony versus, you know. Um, but I think that the question of the the voice of her as a mother, I think was interesting, again, in comparison with Fanny, the next generation voice, who came, I think it seemed like, open to this community life, but knowing that, you know, Israel, Galeco had like, agreed to move to Israel at some point. And I think that the way that she is, like we say in English, like she has a lot of agency, Fanny does. Um, she makes what she wants known and she doesn't pretend that something's okay when it isn't. And Nanita, they handle that, I think, very differently. And I just wanted to maybe just ask you to speak a little bit to them as, and their the, the role of women and like the voice of them as women in the family dynamics. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> really interesting question. Um, I must say that really in this family, the maybe it seems like because of this scene with Anita and uh, she, but uh, the women are not um, more weak than the men. No, really. it's clear that they aren't. Yeah, but of course, like uh, Fanny and Anita, they are um, totally different uh, <laughs> people. Um, when Fanny came to the villa, I think she she was she saw only you know lights. She told me, wow, when I interview her, mm -hmm. actually, I, I didn't tell it before, but I, I started the, to document in Israel, in the movie, of course, after the editing, uh, it's, uh, it's not like that, it's starting in the villa, but I met Fanny and I started to shoot her in Israel before she, 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 she left. To, right, to and you shoot when she is saying goodbye to her work and saying she'll be back and she is leaving yeah. for her Brazilian boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And at that time, she was like, uh, she, she told me, yeah, I know that uh, it's uh, it can uh, um, that it take time till they uh, they can do the aliyah. Mm -hmm. I can wait, but she really didn't want. I think she didn't. Uh, for for me, if it, it was clear that when I met Cleo and the other the other family member, by the way, that it's not. Yeah, they got the decision to to move together, but. Uh, it's not a really, uh, you know, like what she described, that all the family decided are in the same energy about that. Mm. Because the truth is that the, the older brothers and sister, uh, Israel, uh, Bibi, Tutu, um, uh, Chin Chin, yeah? mm -hmm. Salam, that is also a main character in the movie. They they push the, the younger brother, not all of them, by the way, but most of them, I think, to this idea. But... Uh, but the uh, other sister that she was married that time with uh, five children already. Mm -hmm. I think now she has uh, eight or nine. <laughs> I don't know exactly. So she she and the, uh, her husband, for example, that uh, they got married before they moved to the villa. They, 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 they like, you know, okay, they like um, go, went after the, 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 the flow, yeah? The, the mm -hmm. older yeah, brother. they went with the flow, and also Cleo, also Cleo. So, so funny. I think she, she didn't want to 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 see the the danger, yeah, from her. Mm -hmm. Um, she was uh, innocent that time. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but of course, if we're talking about uh, how is she, she's she's very she's very uh, independent. Also in Israel, she has a 
her own own business. She was a dancing teacher and uh, she she moved to Israel by her, herself and uh, for eight years and she really. And Anita is uh, yeah, it's more she's more quiet. She's uh, she's really maybe uh, without Anita, I think there is no villa. Children, of course not, because she <laughs> she brought uh, every one of them. But uh, she has very important goal in the villa. Yeah. But yes, she's more quiet. And when she's with Cleo, especially when they have a serious conversation, so she's uh, so you you can feel more her weakness. Mm. Uh, yeah, this is the word, right? Yeah, uh, the weakness uh, because. Because Cleo is very strong, very his, his main I think uh, um, talent is to speak. You know, you yeah. know how to speak and to and in this specific scenes, I I wasn't ready for 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 this and and I'm sure that also Anita, uh, I for me it was a scene that they uh, will remember and talk about uh, Israel that just left three months before. Yeah. And I, I, I imagine this scene to, that, to get some, a, a little bit uh, of uh, emotions mm -hmm. from, fr from, from them, for the two of them. And in the end, it's uh, Cleo, I think, uh, um, that took this opportunity mm -hmm. because of the cameras, because to do this uh, real conversation. Uh, Cleo is very uh, honest. This is mm -hmm. I can say about him. He really seen, say what he, uh, he's, uh, uh, he think. And it was a very difficult uh, scene uh, in the movie and the, even more difficult in the, <laughs> the material yeah, that uh, stayed in the editing uh, room floor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he... He he blamed her in that scene. He he saw that uh, the children are have to hear one voice from the, their parents, and this is the way why uh, Israel left because he was confused. Mm -hmm. And for him, uh, young people can decide about the, the themselves. Yeah. Before they have children, right? Uh, at least. And yeah, he knows, uh, this is how he, he, he see the, the, the light. This is the, the truth. That's uh, interesting. So the confusion cannot come from an internal doubt. He's entirely defined by what his parents tell him. And so if he's hearing different things from his parents, that's the cause, right? Rather than like... Different. She, she didn't say different thing, but she didn't say the same thing like uh, his. He felt like you are, like, like you say, well, just with me because we are married, but you're not really with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But that's interesting. You never, uh, you never see the question, at least, of is he with her? That, um, question, that I, question, I, that the question never comes up, right? Um, when I met them, I I saw that they have a really strong relationship and maybe also a romantic relationship, but. Uh, yeah, it wasn't the, exactly the situation. Um, uh, but I must say about uh, uh, Anita, Nichia, this is the mm. nickname, Nichia, uh, that uh, she's not all the time sad and uh, quiet. She's also, you know, many times taking the guitar and uh, singing and dancing. And and she liked to, to laugh. I yeah. all the time la uh, was laughing with her jokes and so, but yeah, uh, when she is, and not only she, uh, all of them, when, when they have serious conversation and Cleo had taken the control, mm -hmm. you, you, you felt this science also from the other, right? Yeah. At least times in the movie when they sat on the table. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I think that that's, uh, I think that that dynamic um, comes, comes through and um, it's different to be in a silent in agreement or silent because you're silenced and you see that, you know? Um, so I just, I, yeah, I, I, I think that that, that line of, you know, your voice matters. Um, it made me wonder whose voice matters in this movie. 
um, whose actions matter, whose perspective matters, you know, from that kind of personality side. Um, and, you know, and the implications for the whole family. And I thought that it was, you know, neat to see how um, Bibi and her husband who moved to New York and come back, um, they, you know, they, she leaves, but she returns. Um, and so I thought that that was also an important part that there is, you know, the, no family is perfect and everyone, you know, and, and you don't um, try to solve that problem i think in the movie is a filmmaker which but I, there is no way I want, there is no one answer for that for that yeah i think i think the 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 main uh, if i have to give a title you know for the from the movie yeah uh, um, you say the, the the word choices before yeah. uh, so i think it's about choices and the word freedom also about yeah. the prices all of all one all one of every, every one of us is uh paying for for his choices uh, i married uh, so it's not like to be a single i have i don't have this benefit to be a single and if i was single or oh, i don't have the benefit to as to be a, a married and to have a family uh, so there is no specific answer um bb and uh, it's her uh, husband they they left uh, with agreement not uh, like, uh, like not like a binding it. documents, but yeah. And for, from but if you're asking me, uh, it, it's Hak. Her husband is. Uh, they are still there, by the way, till today, and he's really one of the uh, one of the guys from the villa. Is 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 really get, got into into them, but uh, I'm sure that. For him, it's much more difficult. He was an actor between before he met them, also in television, some movies, commercial, and uh, he 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 studied. They moved for to United States to meet his family, and also he did some uh, one year in the university in New York for his uh, diploma, his research. Uh, so he right now he is there. So is. Uh, is also giving up from a lot of things. And everyone, also Galego and Fanny, mm. which are, now I, I tell you a secret. <laughs> no, it's not a secret because uh, it's not in the movie. It happened after the movie. They got, they applied for uh, another time for a request, request for the Aliyah. Mm. He didn't do the conversion from the beginning, just applied another request. And then they got, they got, a permission to do Dalia, wow. make Dalia, and wow. uh, and they are already in Israel. Actually, mm. they came in the three months ago. Mm. Yeah, about something like that. They live in uh, right now in uh, Tiberias. Mm. <laughs> Actually, very I I, I visit them. Uh, mm. Also, I helped them to buy a car a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, as I told so. Uh, so funny in Galego, funny in uh, Israel uh, are already here. It happened. It happened uh, after the movie was uh, screened for the first time, and um, I'm telling you that. Also, I want the audience to know about what happened. One mm -hmm. of the things that happened after the movie, and also um, this is uh, we, we just I just talk about uh, freedom. And uh, what is freedom and choices and about the price we we pay for we are all paying for our choices so Galego Israel is now in Israel he really make his dream come true they have two children um, um, in the movie they have all, only David and then the, in Argentina they had another baby so they are both here so he's He's with his family in Israel. This is what he wanted, but uh, till today, unfortunately, he's not uh, in a relationship with his uh, any communication with his family. So he is still uh, paying this uh, price for his uh, choices, and also them in the villa, like I mentioned, it's Hak, the husband of Bibi, and all all of them. Uh, it is not. It is not uh, complete. 
the villa is not complete like uh, it was in the before yeah like it was uh, when i met them yeah. um, so this is uh, this is the heart of the movie i think the uh, this is the universal question that i mentioned before yeah and i wrote down at the end you have actually Cleo's voice saying that freedom doesn't exist mm-hmm. and that the happy person is the one who accepts the prison that they live in so there are philosophers around the globe yeah. who have struggled with this question of human freedom and the individual versus the family versus the community and um, how do you live in a way that makes space for all um, and I think that sometimes you find a way and sometimes the parameters are such that you must make a choice so I think that it's really um, um, I think that it was a very you, you said that um, Cleo is a very honest man and I think that um, your your lens is one that seeks you know each person's truth I think in a really compassionate way and so I just wanted to again tell you how much I enjoyed it I'm sure that at the Boston Jewish Film Festival all of the audience um, that watched um, I hope enjoyed it just as much and um, and uh, we can't wait to see um, what comes next from you uh, thank you very much yeah I'm starting to not to shoot but to to think to talk to to, to look for the next story I want to say thank you to you Uh, for this interview and also for uh, all the audience who watched the movie and uh, just to mention that uh, there is a Facebook page for the movie Living Paradise uh, so it's written in English and in Hebrew together um, so uh, I really will be happy to get some comments for the audience if they if somebody want if somebody want to make a like Also, click for a like, and um, I'm also um, published there uh, from time to time a uh, picture and uh, material behind the scenes and also about the, the movie journey around the, the world. Mm. So I'm sure if you share it with the Boston Jewish Film Festival, they may be able to help get the, you know, uh, the word out yeah. about those links so people can continue to, you know, follow you. Yeah. So thank you very much, really. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. My a pleasure. Thank you, Alfred. So nice to meet you.